Hey guys, Bitter Steel here, back with another video, and today we're gonna get ourselves some cheese. We will be playing as Latvia, and we are going for the achievement. This achievement is cheesy. We need to occupy Vesterbotten, I think, some province in Lapland, and we need to do the Ostland focus. I have no idea why they call it this. I'm I've been told it has to do with a Swedish pun regarding cheese. Anyway. Let's get going. Iron Man mode, historical focus is on, and let's see if we can do this. Now, there is a little bit of cheese involved here, so uh, let's start out by deleting the army, and we're gonna queue up one unit. I know, I know, I don't like doing this, but we need to flip fascist ASAP. As for research, we'll just do the basic opener for industry. That's fine. Now, what I'm gonna do for research is just, just get your industry up and running. I'm gonna get cast and start making a little bit of it, and the rest of my research is going to be focused on artillery, and infantry, mostly infantry. Now, as for construction, I like to start with one, two, three dockyards and follow that with mills, but we still have time before we need to. And focuses, we are going to immediately rush for suspend the constitution, empower the paramilitarists and Latvia for Latvians. Then we're gonna pick up a couple of these, but we'll we'll revisit that when the time is right. As for our mills, let's use the first three military factories and get our free efficiency up and just put all of those in infantry equipment. Anything else can go into towed artillery. And after that, we can build some casts once it's researched. And trade with the Germans. They are to be our friends after all. As for your dockyards, start out with building some convoys. I like to build, let's see, 16 convoys. That lands us at 25 to work with. After that, just start spamming out cheap ass chips early submarines. <laughs> we don't need them to be good. We just need a lot of them. Now let's get going. Now, the idea here is that we rush and flip fascist as quickly as possible. And as soon as we can, we start justifying on Sweden. Justification on Sweden is expensive and it will give us at least 10% world tension. So we need to get that justification on Sweden finished before the world hits 25% world tension. And if everything goes right, we should be able to get that justification finished right before the world ticks over into 25% world tension and the allies start throwing out guarantees. Of course, you can always have the unexpected world tension bump somewhere along the line if Spain does something weird or China, but this should work. Now, the way we are going to flip fascist is to go down our focus tree and through Latvia for Latvians, and then get the popularity of the Perkonkursts over 55%, and that should lead to a quick and dirty civil conflict. No constitution for you, Latvia. Don't need it. Now, I like to spend my first 150 PP and going up to partial mobilization. I could be wrong, but at least we'll start building and producing stuff a little bit quicker. Now, this unit, do not set a deployment location. We want to keep this in the queue so that when the Civil War does fire, we'll be the only ones with troops ready to go. And we finished electronic engineering. I'm going to take that research slot over to close air support. I just love CAS in this patch. I, I, I've already loved CAS, but it's just even better now. And Latvia for Latvians. There's not a lot of Latvians here. Our manpower is disappointingly low. All right, uh, concentrated or dispersed? Eh, I'll leave the choice up to you, doesn't matter that much. I like going for concentrated since we won't have a lot of factories and I want the ones that we do have to be working at peak capacity. No, oh, I also forgot to mention, take your air force, those 12 fighters and just delete them. I'll put the fighters in storage. Um, otherwise, if they're deployed and it comes to a civil war, they will go to the loyalist side and they end up being destroyed in the civil war and you won't have fighters. This way is uh, it's easy, <laughs> lets you hold on to 12 fighters. Not much, but it allows you to beg for lend lease. And we're gonna go over and get improved machine tools. Yes, I know it's still a little bit ahead of time. Trust me, it's worth it. Let's see here, we constantly have this ticking disaster going. Yes, Spain, I know. Uh, if we do not have more than 55 support for the Per uh every, what is this, 80 days? 90 days, 150 days, I don't know. Whenever this bar fills up, it adds 5% to their support. So eventually this is gonna start, um, well, becoming a problem for you unless you want to flip. When they hit 55%, this bar will fill one more time. I think it will take 20 days and that will start the civil war. All right, Latvia for Latvians. I could lift the ban now, but I don't want to take that 10% stability hit just yet. want to get recruit to fanatics first and then we'll get the other one. It, it, the order doesn't really matter that much. It's just 10% stability means less political power and less factory output. So I'll, I'll, I'll delay that as long as I can. And we have 100 political power. What I like to do now is hire the infantry experts so we can get some ticking army experience. 
Army experience will allow us to change our templates later on. Besides, our political cabinet's not that good. A lot of these guys are locked behind focuses. Eh, and, and we're not gonna do those focuses. And with the fanatics recruited, time to lift the ban. Ah, and there we go, we have Cass. Let's also set up Cass. I want to start making close air support as soon as possible. But we cannot neglect close air support. Cass is very big. I want a little bit of Cass being produced and then I'll move into towed artillery. Now as for research, the industry is pretty much caught up. What I want to do now is start preparing for our eventual conflict with Sweden. So get support weapons, work on the infantry stuff, work on artillery a bit. Don't forget to get radio. Radio is pretty big. And of course, if we are to get the Sweden, do not forget to research the transport ship. Hurrah, the ban is lifted. Let's also join the anti common turn pact. Now we have more options. Could get the old ways. It will give us taking support and it will also give us 10% war support. Don't need that just yet. Instead, let's pick the Latvian military complex first. Three military factories. Yes, please. Three mills. Now we only need to finish the last dockyard. What I've also done is uh, queue up a little bit of railroad to connect this um, naval base to the rest of the railroad. You don't have to do this. I just find it easier to deal with the eventual um, supply issues we might get in this region. After that is done, we are going to start building mills and a lot of them. Well, a lot, as, as many as we can, considering our industry is not the world's greatest. All right, Latvian military complex is done. That pushed us over 55%. And as you can see, that will give us a new mission here for 20 days when this timer fills we go to war with ourselves so let's prepare for that do not go down the rest of this tree not until we have dealt with sweden this will make the allies throw out guarantees early i could get the old ways now but i don't really need it instead what i like to do is now rejoin the railways seek axis investments and adopt axis war economics and then i'll look back to that side why well there's, there's a bunch of good stuff here. Or alternatively, rejoin the railways, modernize our industry for those civvies, and then get access investments and access war economy. I leave the choice up to you, but just you need an industry. Also hoard a little bit of political power. We'll need about 52 or 53 to justify on Sweden the instant the civil war fires. So you don't want to be waiting on that. Timing is going to be pretty tight. There we go, Latvia in flames. Pick the bottom option for a stronger Latvia. There we go. And we're now fighting ourselves. Yay, that sucks. Okay, justify on the Swedes immediately. Could just get Lapland or Vestergotland. I forgot which one they want. Lapland, I think. Yeah, this will take us... Uh, this will create 10% will tension. So we are no longer under that uh, threshold of 10%. We are on the clock now. We have to get that justification finished before the world hits 25%. If you've done everything right, you should make it just in time. Of course, the world can always throw a wrench to things by getting weird spikes. It is what it is. Now for the army, let's just set a location next to Riga. Deploy that one unit, queue up a couple more. Give him a general, any general, but I prefer to get this guy, the ranger. And I'll let about an hour or so take by so he has some orc and go into Riga and walk over to Dagav Daugav Pilz. And this should be over without any fighting. And it's over, we have our stuff back. I can just park the army on Lipaya, the port closest to Sweden exercise them and recruit more troops. Sadly, it feels like we lost a lot of manpower. Anyway, you want to get about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You want to get about 10 guys trained and a couple of these will do as well. About three, they will serve to guard our port of Riga and the port of Lipaya. Sweden will counter invade you, so be prepared. We do have another 100 political power. I could uh, expand the military staff, but instead let's wait until we get 150. We need more manpower and we need to go up to extensive conscription. Once we modernize our industry, we'll also have a much better handle on things. We should be able to actually get some stuff built. Well, hopefully. So after modernizing the industry, I'm going to go over Axis investments, adopt Axis war economy, and then we'll see from there. Time for extensive conscription. Every man, woman and child will fight for the glory of Latvia. Those Coast Guards we just recruited just assigned up to this guy. The old guard gives them a little bit of extra entrenchment. Park them on Riga and the other one on Lipaya. And the third one will park on the tile next to Riga just in case they naval invade here and cut the railway. That would be annoying. Now let's set up our naval invasions. We are going to be hitting Karlskrona and the tiles next to it. We can launch 10 invasions, so I like to 
damage. Five of them with two divisions each. Hit Karlskrona, the two tiles next to it, and then hit the tiles to the south of that as well. So this one and the one next to Malmo, or well, two tiles next to Malmo. Oh, I need more manpower though, always need more manpower. Now the access investments will help with the production of equipment. 10% factory output is nothing to sneeze at. Sniff at? Sneeze at? It's good. Of course you could go with renew ally trade and get a bunch of stuff for free, but I just, I just like getting that war economy here. I could be completely wrong, I just like it. Size, it doesn't really matter that much in the grand scheme of things. The most important thing is the timing here. You need about a hundred and something days. Eh, should be able to. Okay, we're gonna build our ninth submarine. That should be fine. After that one's done, just go back to making convoys. And we've adopted Axis War Economy. Hurrah, we're now on War Economy on the cheap. Now, they do want us to demobilize our economy because technically we don't have 5% war support. You can easily fix that by panning all the way over here and getting the old ways. Should be ready to go to war in about 35 days and the world is still not on fire. Ah, and we have more political power. Now, I would recommend we fill out the military staff here very close to our war with Sweden. A good pick would be the army offense expert. This will help with our naval invasion. Or you could get the close air support expert. Uh, it does help with our cast. Cast is really, really good. But we don't have that much cast yet. So I recommend start with the chief of the army, army offense. And then as the next guy, we'll pick the close air support expert. We are making more casts, and I can always ask Germany for some casts once things kick off. And from this point on, research doesn't matter. I'm just going to get fighters as well. If you want to turn this into a longer campaign, of course, I would recommend you improve your industry improve your research and then just focus on the infantry uh, you don't really have the industrial base as of yet to really go with tanks but you do you I mean it's a fun game nonetheless the world is at 23% world tension and we are there there we go we can now declare war on Sweden now I did slightly miscalculate our convoys well I didn't I forgot to um, stop making submarines early so I built like 80% of our 10th submarine as a result I am two convoys short to start our naval invasion it should still be fine though in theory, let's let's wait a little bit. The world's not on fire yet. Pretty much just a single convoy short. You shouldn't have this issue. There we go. I have my convoys. Declare war. Yay. Don't call any allies in and just start. The Swedish Navy is larger than yours, but they don't really run their Navy that actively because of oil. So you should be able to set off your naval invasion without an issue. I'll take the speed down and fight Sweden. Sweden is a bit of a, well, they're not that weak, so you might need to micromanage a bit. Before we get to that, I'm going to spam a bunch of these Artillerias Pokes Division, whatever. And let's ask Germany for some stuff. Artillery, yes. Fighters, yes. And close air support, great. And we're going to do the same with Italy, though I did forget to sign the non-aggression pact. I'll need a couple of days or a couple of hours and then... Ugh. Wow, zero Stukas. Thanks, Hitler. All right, maybe Italy can do us a better deal. No artillery. Yikes. No cast. Yes, cast. No fighter. Ugh. Just cast. Really? Oh, infantry equipment. Okay, so I'll, I'll settle for that. Anyway, as for the naval invasion, yes, uh, Karlskrona is going to be defended, but we will be attacking from multiple sides. It should be fine. So the units landing up here to the north. Okay, delete the orders. One unit go south. One unit go there. We're going to surround the port. As for these units, we have different ideas. One unit to go there, one unit go north, one unit here. Try to cut across and use both to do that. Try to get there. And these guys will try to hit Malmo. And there we go. We want to be in control of the southern tip here. The Swedish army is not that huge but they can be a problem. As for the submarines, there's no point keeping them here. They don't provide shore bombardment. Instead, set them on convoy raiding in the upper Baltic Sea. Sweden is gonna launch naval invasions. They always do. As for your air force, set them for air superiority, logistics strike, and close air support. And whenever we take up airport here, send them over. For now, just keep them over the Baltic states. And we are already pushing. Yes, going well, going well. Now, the Swedish army is larger than ours, but they will waste troops in naval invasions that we will kill. Plus, well, we are a human player. We have a brain that will help. And keep training divisions. You want to get like 12, 13, 14 out, and you can easily overrun Sweden once you get those. Hurrah, we've made landfall. Great. And I'm going to take Malmo as well. And with those two ports secured, we'll be able to supply the units here. 
Again, it's just a little bit of micro. It's not too difficult, but it, it, it makes things a lot easier for you. If you just want to, if you just take a little bit of time to a little bit of micro, it, it saves you a lot of headache down the line. Let's see, Sweden has at most 23 divisions, so they outnumber us two to one. But I am confident, I am very confident that we can win this. A little surprised they haven't naval invaded us yet, but I'm guessing I'm intercepting some of their convoys here. Yeah, that's probably helping. Ah, there we go, first naval invasion of the day. They almost always land the same place. They land in Lipaya and the tile above it. So once they land here, send this extra division in to crush it. And this guy should be able to hold against the naval invasion. All right, it looks like Sweden has responded to our invasion. Let's just stop the attacks for a bit. Let's consolidate, finish up to the south here, get a couple more of these divisions out. You can force deploy them if you want, you don't have to. But what we are gonna do is go into this division, change it out and add one artillery to it. We should be able to provide sufficient artillery. We just need more manpower. Always need more manpower, but we are mobilizing some. Now, as for this, I would not seek a line with, with Germany. You could, you can join the Axis that way and have Germany do all the heavy lifting, but Germany will get a lot of war participation and they tend to take your stuff. I'd rather not. You don't need them. If you if you don't feel confident fighting Sweden, you could try that and then just hope you have enough to take Lapland. I'm not going to do that. Instead, let's keep improving our industry, develop natural resources, or actually domestic motor company. Yes. All right. First German lend lease is in. Always just cancel it, rack up some sort of massive, massive deficit and keep asking for stuff. Always keep requesting lend lease. The Germans tend to send you a lot of stuff. Let's see if I can get an encircle here I'm gonna push through this tile into that tile and circle that division and I'm also attacking the divisions next to these so they cannot pin me and stop me hopefully that should be enough and then of course I need to take that airfield so I can get my cast into action I don't really have that much cast yet but I focused more on artillery than cast but this should be enough to make an impact oh great they landed more divisions let's clean those up ah this is unfortunate. Strikes. There's very little you can do about this. Just pick the most expensive option. We are always going to be low on stability and war support. It is what it is. Spend the PP. Just suffer through it. Uh, this is unfortunate. They managed to get the divisions into position before we can close. Oh well. Oh well. It's, it's not horrible. It's just a little annoying. And we've taken the airfield. Great. Now let's take our airplanes over and put them over southern Sweden. We should be able to defend this easily enough. We're starting to even the odds. Sweden does have quite a few divisions. Uh, let's say they're at 20, probably, but they cannot bring them all to bear. Well, we can do whatever we want. We're the player. We're not stupid. Citation needed. Let's see if we can get the Göteborg and circle more divisions. That's always my plan, is to encircle more divisions. I know that a lot of you don't really like this micro, but a minimum of micro is required considering our tiny population. And we will just not be able to get enough troops to really steamroll the uh, Swedes. But trust me, it's, it's not that bad. As you can see, Sweden is starting to crack under the pressure. They've taken a lot more casualties than we have. They've lost several of their divisions. I think in terms of troop strength, we're about equal. And every time they make one of these ridiculous naval invasions, that's just another division you destroy and they lose. And through using the constant lend lease, we are able to build up a, well, competent air force that will definitely give them a run for their money. As we control more and more of the railway and the supply hubs to the south, it all just keeps getting easier. This is where the majority of Swedish industry is as well. So once you take the south and push up to this river, it's it's all over for Sweden. Now, if we take Göteborg, we have all the supply we need and we can get going. And at this point, Sweden is pushed to the breaking point. You can tell my general down here knows it. I can just battle plan my way to victory. Up the speed and let's go. We are firmly in control of this war now. Time to make Sweden disappear. And it's over. Sweden has fallen to the might of Latvia. Now, you just need this province, Lapland, up there. What I like to do is just take Lapland for myself and puppet Sweden. I don't want to garrison all that land. And if you're going down this path, there's no way to core that, if I'm not mistaken. So might as well just puppet it and keep what we need. I can always give this slice of Lapland back to Finland. Sorry, I can always give Lapland back to Sweden. Once we have achieved the achievement, 
and we have done Ostland. Now this is our next goal. We just need to finish the Focus Ostland to be able to get that achievement on our list. And that means we need to go with, seek alignment with Germany, free the Unghuskungunskrust, whatever. And then either Baltic Fascists or Lightning Strikes, the choice is yours. 20 minutes later. Well, there goes Czechoslovakia and Germany hands over Ostland, except for Memel, apparently. And with that, we have achieved the glorious, this achievement is cheesy achievement. I, I still don't know what that's a reference to. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. And check out this next video. I'm sure you'll love it.